Well, hello and welcome to the Shimin Hanga. Yesterday I tested the crap out of the DJI goggles when it comes to latency, because this was an open topic. I spent two hours in the morning to test everything and to confirm my theories about inconsistencies of latency. And it was hard to find something. And then they released an update that fixes all the things. So uh, my work was not useless, but yeah, you know. The current update as of uh, December 3rd, 2019, fixes all of the thank you blinds. In my last video, I showed you that on digital, there is a bug if you have low latency, which is let's say 20 milliseconds of latency and you switch to high latency without power cycling the air unit then the latency is spoiled on high quality mode uh, it's then 40 or 50 or very high but this has been fixed in the current firmware so you can now switch between low latency and high quality mode and you see the latency in the goggles and this latency is correct so that's a fine fix and the second thing was people had mixed mixed results when using those goggles with the AV in. I tested everything with the FXD Venus Pro simply because this is the fastest cam I had. It's 0.3 milliseconds of latency measured with this. This screen has 4.8 milliseconds of latency in total. So 4.5 for the screen alone. That's damn fast. Screen fast. The fat sharks, in my case here with um, rapid fire modules, have around 10 milliseconds of latency. So what you flew until now might have had 10 milliseconds or more and you were totally fine with it. Just keep that in mind. This is my FR632 uh, video receiver, for example, which is cabled as video into my screen here. It is also at the 4.8 milliseconds mark, which Seems to be mostly the latency of this screen here. This uh, introduces no additional latency, so you can forget this as a latency culprit, so to say. And then I used this video receiver as the analog in source for my goggles. And yesterday there was this issue if you switch modes from PAL to NTC while the goggles are already on, then the goggles are confused and latency increases randomly to 40, 50 or even 100 milliseconds. And the point is, you don't have to actually switch from PAL to NTC on purpose, because you don't do this too often. But it can be that if you just power up this receiver here, and let's say this receiver boots up as a default in PAL mode, goggle set to PAL, then you fire up your quad, which, is, which uses an NTC cam, so it switches the live view to NTC. And the goggles also switch to NTC and then the latency spoils the show. So they fix this when you switch from NTC to PAL. The image uh, is gone for a second. The AV in uh, switches off and on again. So I think that's what they've done. They recognize if the video standard changes and then uh, reset or start from the beginning and thus have no additional latency. My measurement said that on both on NTSC and PAL it's around 20 milliseconds of latency on these goggles, which is a fine number. To put this in perspective, if you were used to flying the Foxia Falco, for example, which is a very good uh, FPV camera, uh, this thing had around 20 milliseconds of latency. It was noticeable, but it was okay for most people. And I think normal humans can't notice much of latency below 20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds, as I said, is about the sweet spot. The AV input port here is a bit flimsy, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe this is point of failure. Unless maybe you're a race of every millisecond counts or if you're a very avid freestyler who thinks that latency is really affecting him so much then you could use those as your main goggles and sell all the other goggles maybe. I attach you the video from yesterday where you see all my latency tests yesterday. I will not repeat, I hope it's okay for you guys, I will not repeat uh, the, the latency tests after the firmware now in front of the camera. You just have to please trust me. 
I tested this after, uh, yesterday at the evening and, and noted the results all down. Latency is fine, we can work with this. One of the other updates with this last firmware update was the AV in source can now be recorded just with the button here and that's, that's awesome. If you fly with these goggles, analog, you want to have a recording possibility. In digital mode, if you press record, for me it didn't increase the latency about 5 milliseconds as even the manual state somewhere I've heard. So I cannot confirm that recording does increase the latency. Maybe uh, other guys can do the measurements as well. Uh, Nathaniel, as I named you last video, please do your firmware update and do measurements with and without recording. Yes, I know, on the air unit. Uh, but for me, it didn't really change the latency. And you really have to do a lot of latency measurement samples and just take the lowest value, not the average, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah, and the one thing about the DJI goggles latency measurements, I only tested them here on the bench in optimal conditions. If you fly far away, of course your latency increases. Keep that in mind. The other big thing that I was really looking forward to on the new firmware update is the custom OSD setting. So in the goggles you can uh, have just a normal OSD or switch it to custom OSD and it reads it not only reads the standard values from uh, beta flight, like the voltage and arm disarm state and a few other things. Um, now it can access most of the OSD values that you can set and place in beta flight OSD. And the cool thing is, I thought, how are they gonna make it? Do you have a menu interface in the goggles where you move around your OSD values? No. You just enable or disable custom OSD. And you still do your placement of the OSD in the beta flight configurator, which is a clever thing, how they did it. Yeah, this is the little Eldarko, uh, the one that crashed on the church. It still lives and flies. Placed the DJI air unit, the second one on there. So I bought the package where you have the goggles and two air units, which is, yeah, if you already have a Tyrannis or transmitter with Crossfire, it's the better package to get. So I have my second air unit there on a 3 inch, and it's total fun on a 3 inch. I can tell you. And this is now below 250, you can fly everywhere and you have Crossfire as a rock solid link and you have a really good video link. So what more can you ask for? Yeah, I could have asked for my sol more soldering skills because this tiny 20 mil board here I tried to solder on UART connection, data connection, but I failed. I, I killed those little solder pads, they, they fell off. Now I have no chance to solder it on a, on a T and R port. So I only have voltage here. Yeah, I read in this uh, RC group thread that I subscribed to in the last few days. I read one guy was concerned, he bought a lot of batteries and, and tiny whoop thingies or, uh, or, or toothpick copters that he can fly in his park. Will he be totally spoiled by using DJI digital system and will he want to sell all of his analog gear then? That's a tough question. I still I didn't fly analog since I started flying digital but mostly because of the weather is crap and I don't get to fly it that often. But yeah that's the valid concern there. If you fly with this system you might have issues going back to analog. Maybe it helps that we can now use this as our analog goggles as well with external receiver. Okay, so now you saw my thoughts about it. And I still I did a lot of measurements, latency measurements that are still valid. So I will uh, show you them now. In the end, I tested the AV in from the DJI goggles where it was okay, so that's also still valid. Just keep in mind that now with the firmware update uh, it's okay in all conditions that I've tested. Another thing that I read in this thread, some people had the issue that the AV in now is completely black while it still is able to record on the SD card, which is weird. Apparently the fix for them was to 
scale the display settings to 80% and then to 100% again and power cycle and then it works. So might be still a bit glitchy from the firmware and might need another firmware update until it really works. But uh, for me it just worked. I just read it and I wanted to tell you this. So now check the latency measurements. Testing my video link. This is the Venus Pro from FXT. My test the fastest cam on earth 0.3 milliseconds of latency from the camera in the box here with the switchable LED onto the screen here. Here is the light diode measuring the time it takes from the camera to the monitor to the screen, glass to glass latency. And you don't do average here because it's the PAL frame is what 20 milliseconds, so we always get a random number of 0 to 20 milliseconds. And this is around where the minimum latency comes into play. Let's say it bumps up here already at 4.8. We have to subtract the 0 0.3 milliseconds of the cam latency. So we get the screen latency. Okay, move to the next device. Being the FetchArx with rapid fire module. And we have to take a lot of samples now again. I will do a time lapse of this maybe. <laughs> But until now we're at 12 milliseconds. Okay, I think it's time and safe to say that around 10 milliseconds is the latency of our analog link. Okay, the next test. I'm in PAL testing the DJI goggles. Now I already did a lot of switches here. Currently I'm at 15 milliseconds. As always, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.